Hi, this is Josh Olson. You're watching Trailers from Hell, and today we're going to talk about a little-known gem of a film that follows, I think, one of the most important rules of filmmaking, which is know when to cut and run. Get when the getting is good. Uh, this is a terrific little film. It's called Cutter's Way. Give this clown enough to cover any damage. you will get it back in a couple hours. Come on. Cutter's Way is, in some ways, the dark side of the Big Lebowski, in that it uses the framework of a kind of film noirish mystery to illuminate the lives of a bunch of fringe dwellers, one of whom is played by the dude himself, the very great Jeff Bridges. Don't be fooled by the trailer, though, which makes it look like a comedy. It really isn't. It's about a bunch of characters, fringe dwellers, outcasts who live in Santa Barbara, played by Jeff Bridges, John Hurd, and Lisa Eichhorn. But the center of the film is John Hurd's performance. It's, it's stunning. I really thought when I saw this film that I was watching the birth of a major star. And unfortunately, not a lot of people saw the film. Ivan Passer, who directed it, was a Czech screenwriter who had written some of Milos Forman's earliest films. And it's just a, a terrific little character study uh, that really goes to kind of the dark heart of America at this point in time. A small note, but it seems somehow important to me. It's something I always think of when I see this film. I think this was the first movie I'd ever seen a movie star in uh, with Bedhead. Uh, there's a scene where Jeff Bridges wakes up in the morning and his hair just looks horrible. And you realize how many movies you see where people wake up in bed and they look absolutely perfectly groomed. Uh, Bridges looks like he slept on the set that night and just showed up to work. It's, it's kind of amazing. The great character actor Stephen Elliott shows up in this, a veteran of uh, lots and lots of TV performances. It's kind of funny because he appeared in Arthur the same year and seemed to be wearing almost the same wardrobe in a weird way, playing kind of a darker version of the same character he played in that movie. Uh, but this is one of those movies that was a victim of studio politics. Uh, the executives who supported the film at United Artists left after the film was done before it was released, and the movie foundered under the new administration. But word started leaking out, and it finally was given a minimal release, played at a few film festivals, and got some really good reviews. You know, Jeff Bridges is finally getting some serious recognition the last few years, but he's got a huge body of work, and this is definitely one of his great performances. One of the things I really, really appreciate about this film, and I think really affected me, was the ending. I'm not going to give anything away, but I'm going to tell you, this movie ends the instant the movie is over. I mean, the instant. There's no hanging around, patting each other on the back, no ironic coda, no long last lingering shot. It just, bam, to black. It tells you the story it needs to tell you, and then it gets out. It leaves the audience wanting more, which I like to think is significantly better than leaving them wanting less. And I think it was the first movie I ever saw that did this. If you've seen my film, A History of Violence, I can tell you that Cutter's Way was one of the movies on my mind when I came up with that ending. A film by Yvonne Passer from UA Classics.